Wake that ass up early in the morning. The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV, Angela Yee, Charlemagne the God. We are the Breakfast Club. We got a special guest in the building. Mm. Sparkle. What up? Welcome. Oh Thank my you. gosh, Sparkle is here. <gasps> now, Sparkle, I have to say, when I first found out about the uh, Surviving R. Kelly docuseries, they had asked me to moderate a panel. Uh, the first thing I asked Lifetime, because this was before it came out, I said, is Sparkle in it? <laughs> And really? They say, they say, yeah, Sparkle is in the okay, docu-series. Dope. All right. Why would you ask that, though? Well, because I knew you had ties to R. Kelly from back when you were his artist. Mm-hmm. And then I knew that it was your niece and you had testified in the trial. So I figured that would be some powerful testimony, somebody who was there firsthand. From the beginning. Yeah. Yep, you yep, know. Yep. yep. So let's I start from the it. beginning, Sparkle. Oh, Lord. Now, how did you hook up with R. Kelly? Okay. As far as recording artists. Let's, let's start there. Yeah, let's get let's that hooked up there. part right. Okay. Um, 89. It's a little way back there, but yeah, I was like um, one. Yeah, <laughs> shut up, Evie. No, you weren't. That's my story. You were in college. I'm, I'm, I'm sticking with it. Yeah, '89 in the studio. He was um, working on Billy Ocean at the time, mm-hmm. and actually, a girlfriend introduced me. She and he were real cool. She wanted him to hear me sing, mm-hmm. and um, I didn't sing for him that day though, um, and didn't you know keep in contact or anything like that. Mm-hmm. But fast forward, um, I, you know, I started. Um, little bit seeing him out in clubs or whatever and then in 92 i was asked to come down to sing for him and then i am the girl um behind all the backgrounds on Aaliyah's first album Mm -hmm. Mm. so i got to sing that except for aj nothing but a number because you know yeah when yeah when that came out i was like what's this song i was like this this is not a song that we did you know but you know yeah at the time when you first met him was there anything did you see anything funny going on with r kelly with him into young girls, or did you know he was dating Aaliyah at the mm-hmm. time? Did you know that they have a relationship? Did you see any of that when you were doing background vocals for R. Kelly? I ain't see not a thing. The, you know, studio life, people don't understand studio life. It's, look, I was working a job in 92 when he came and was like, you know, can you do this, do this for me, do the backgrounds for me? I was working a nine to five. So I would, you know, leave the job, come to the studio, do my job there, you know, in I'm in the booth at the, you know, at the mic singing pretty much the whole time. Mm-hmm. I didn't see anything going on. But mind you, Barry Hankerson is Hankerson is right there. That's his Leah's Ali- uncle. uncle, blood uncle. Her parents are there. Who's thinking to be looking for anything? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So I wasn't thinking about anything outside that's going on. You know what I mean? So, no, I didn't see nothing and at all. Watching the docuseries, you see that he really did keep people separated. Oh, yeah. that That's that's what he does. He doesn't like for you to fraternize with each other. Like, he had other artists, you know, other than other than myself, although I'm the only one that came out. Um, he didn't want us talking to each other. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? We couldn't, we couldn't fraternize. He didn't want me speaking to anybody because he was like, "You're here. You have to act like you're here." You know what I mean? And you that said ain't, you would try yeah, to speak that, to people, and that they wouldn't even yeah, respond. Yeah, I was like, "What's going on?" I was like, "That ain't me. I'm not that chick. I'm gonna speak to you. Mm-hmm. I, I won't if I don't want to, but I'm gonna speak to you." You know, and I tried to stick it to him a few times because I'm like, "Dude." Whatever, I'm gonna speak to these people. Mm-hmm. Have these people around me, and I can't say, "Hey, like, mm-hmm. come on, y'all." We've seen Aaliyah's mother make a statement and mm-hmm. say that what people are saying happened didn't happen, and that it's a lot of lies mm-hmm. in the docu series. How do you respond to something like that? Well, I mean, I don't know her story. You know one what of I mean? your best friends actually said they they actually seen it. If I remember, yeah, right, on um, actually, she's an actual girl that I met. While uh, working on Aaliyah's um, album, mm-hmm. um, I didn't even know her then. I met her there. You know what I mean? What's her she name? Was, I don't want to disrespect her. Yeah. I just don't remember her name. Javante. Javante. She's one of go. the girls who was like um, Aaliyah's posse, so to speak, or her background. Mm-hmm. They were called Second Chapter. It was three girls. And they were in the studio at all times. They're on the album. You know, one of the girls is rapping on you. You can hear hear you can hear it all through. You know, Aaliyah's first album. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now, for yourself, did R, was R. Kelly ever strange to you? Like, did he ever come on to you? You know, R- Robert, of course, he liked me. You know, he's a handsome guy, but I, you know, I didn't want to mis- mix match those lines, so to speak. You know what I mean? I'm there to do a job. Mm-hmm. I'm there to get my career on. Thereafter, the Aaliyah situation, you know, from 92 to 96, I had no really real interaction with him at all. So I don't know anything that was going on. I didn't go on no tours with him. Mm -hmm. You know, I didn't do any of that. But, you know, in 96, I was, you know, asked to come back and do some more backgrounds for him. him, I thought. 
And two songs in, he was like, yo, he came in the booth, yo, we gonna work on your stuff now. You know what I mean? Um, and then after that, working on my um, working on my stuff, then I introduced the family. Right. So you never had a relationship with R. Kelly? No. That type of relationship? No. Mm-hmm. We had a business, time- but me and Robert were real tight. We are really cool. Like, family. I thought so. Right. Right. You know. And at that time, the marriage to Aaliyah had happened, but you thought it was all a hoax. Yeah. Like, who, who who's thinking a 15-year-old is going to marry? Like, your mama and daddy are there. Right. Your uncle is there. Who's even thinking that? Like, did you think that was real? Um, at the time. I remember before, at that time. Before the, the internet, right, before the stuff. license even uh, yeah. showed up. I remember no. at like, that time I did think it was fake. Yeah, come fake. on. And there was you a know? rumor, and they kind of played into it. Like, exactly. They showed in the but, documentary. But Robert, but Robert does that. Like, even... It, Prior to, you know, my album coming out, you know, we're we're at the McDonald's called Rock and Roll McDonald's in Chicago that we used to hang out at. He hung out at a lot. Um, Which I don't get it. That grown ass man hanging out at yeah. McDonald's with high school kids. You know, and, and and these two girls came. Oh, R. Kelly, R. Kelly, R. Kelly. And then, then they stood back. Oh, is that your girlfriend? And he was like, yeah, yeah. And I was like, tapped on. I was like, and don't mm-hmm. be saying that shit to them. I was right. like, I don't want nobody thinking that we like that like that. You know what I mean? And he was like, no, 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 see, this will make them, you know, buy your records, you know, if, if I'm your, you know, if they think I'm your guy. Like you do a song, yeah. like, be careful, so, yeah. you put the video so out together, it's he, more he, interesting. He, yeah, he, he does those type of things. So, you know, even with the Aaliyah thing, the hoax thing, yeah. Mm-hmm. When, did, when did you realize that he was into young girls? When, when did that finally, when, when did that finally surface that you realized, like, damn, this he really likes young girls? I didn't realize that until the tape surface. Until and, you and, seen the tape. So, so the tape surface. So you had no clue, no, no idea what was going on until idea. that tape came out. No idea. No idea. And I, you know what? I wish I had of known before introducing my family. Like I introduced my entire family. We're a musical family. Mm-hmm. And look, Robert had just got a situation with Interscope. He was taking me to Interscope. He was leaving the other um, artists on Jive. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So he was going to need bodies. Right. My family's a musical family. Let me see if I can put them in there. Get and, everybody Yeah, paid. and, you know, let them be stars like he was about to make me. You know, so I introduced my niece. Um, she, You know, my sister and my brother-in-law brought her down. I didn't just right. throw her She's to the wolves. Her you know what I mean? So mm-hmm. I, I, I introduced her correctly. Then I introduced other nieces and nephews. You know what I'm saying? They're, they're musical. They had some success. Su- 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 uh, success. Some success. <laughs> Got you. Uh, overseas. And, um, you know, I want to introduce them. And then my brother-in-law, her, my niece's um, father. Right. He's a dope guitarist. I was begged Robert to listen to him. You know, he came down and he's on a few of his albums playing. You know what I mean? So I was trying to spread the love mm-hmm. through the family. I, I, you know, I wanted to give, you know, you know, I wanted to give more to my family and bring them along the support, with right. what God had blessed me with. So, so, hey. What was your reaction when you seen that tape? Where were you when you seen the tape? Did you get calls before and like yes. this? So tell let, us how, yeah. how you first found out about that tape. Let me, where you let me go back just a, a quick second. So prior to the tape coming out, I got two phone calls from two separate people in Robert's camp. Mm-hmm. And they were saying to me, yo, something ain't right. Your niece down here by herself too much. What's going on? I'm not there. I don't know any of this. I get on the phone with my sister immediately. What's up? Like, what you doing? Why you got her down there by herself? People are calling me. Something ain't right. You know what I'm saying? But, but, but why would y'all think something was right But if, if y'all didn't know they what was were, going on? They were telling me that right. something didn't look and right. Parents, I didn't know that because I'm not there. And your pa- her parents were saying, no, everything's good. Everything's good. Everything's cool. You know what I mean? So what I do is I call the Department of Children and Family Services. To go investigate. Before you knew what was Before going on. Before I knew well, what anything. Something had to give you a Yo, feeling to do just that. People you know were just where from... people were calling me saying, it don't look right. Something's not right. And at that time, you and R. Kelly were good. We were good, but I hadn't seen Robert. Mm-hmm. I was away from him. You know what, what I mean? What happened with, okay, so when you did put out your project, right, which mm-hmm. did well, mm-hmm. what happened after that? So Robert had, um, we were actually working on the second album. Woman's Threat, his song, mm-hmm. that's actually my song. Wow. So, yeah. I recorded three songs on my second album mm-hmm. um, before asking to be released from him. He finally, you know, let me go. Did, why did you ask to be released? Because it wasn't a good space with he and I anymore. He was inserting himself in my personal life. He didn't want me to have a boyfriend. Mm. You know what I mean? Then there was an incident where um, I had told someone, one of the other artists that he had, that he was only taking me to Interscope. He got pissed off at that with me. 
So those two things, I was just like, look, this ain't a good space. And um, actually, before my before the first album came out, there was a big meeting because Robert said he was taking my deal away from me. What? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Why? So he did because I had a boyfriend and because I had told uh, this person that, you know, I was the only person going to Interscope and he was pissed. Damn. So there was a big meeting. Mm -hmm. Um, Barry Hankerson, Robert. I brought my parents. I'm grown now, right? Mm -hmm. I'm I'm over 21, right? Um, And the meeting happened at the Hyatt out in, at the O'Hare um, Airport area in Chicago. And a couple of my other family members also came to pray. <laughs> um, we sitting there. Robert's trying to get, you know, Barry Hank is trying to get us back on track, you know, everything, you know, see if this can happen, if the album's going to come out or what have you. Mm-hmm. The killer for me, and I should have took heed at that point, was he sat there and speaking to me and my parents, and he told my mom and my dad, your daughter's so fine, I jerk off just looking at her. I'm sorry. You said that to your dad? My mama and my dad. What? What, what, what did your mama and your daddy do? That my, is my, crazy. Yo, my daddy bucked his eyes and looked at me. And then when we left there, because still I was fuming at this point. I was like sinking like, just, just say this. I can't believe he said that. And on and yeah, everything. And they didn't beat his ass and your family was there. I'm surprised. Why didn't they? I don't know. I think just a naiveness, just a naiveness of me in the business. This is my first out. I don't know nothing. You know what I mean? And you hear those things like you'll take you'll take pretty much anything. You know, just to to make sure opportunity. Yeah, because and I'm not knowing. You know what I mean? But um, that's disgusting. Yo, we left out of there. I'm in the back seat of my parents' car, and my dad turns around. He's like, "Baby, I ain't gonna even say what he said, but." I should have took heed. And, and now, look, back to the tape. When you first seen the tape or heard about the tape, what did you do? What was your reaction? Because you never told us. Yeah, okay. So a lawyer con- lawyer called my home phone. I don't know how he got it, but he called me and he stated to me, um, there is a tape that possibly has one of your family members on it. Mm. And I would like for you to uh, go to your niece, no, go to your sister and your brother-in-law and get them to um, acquire me as their lawyer um, so I can, you know, defend them in this tape. I was like, absolutely not, because I don't know that that's my family member on that Mm -hmm. tape. Mm -hmm. So, okay, he said, I can send one of my associates over um, to show you. I was like, all right, you know, send them. I called my oldest brother. I was like, yo, they saying it's a tape with somebody on it. Um, Come down here and view it with me. He was like, okay. I called them back. I was like, okay, me and my brother are going to view it. He was like, no, no, no. Hold up, hold up. Only you can see it. So, you know, I was like, okay, bruh, don't come. I'm going to be okay. My, when I left the nest, my daddy hands me off with a banger. So I'm going to be good one way or the other. Mm-hmm. Gave you a gun. Your daddy yeah. gave you a gun. Yes, he should, did. You should have used that gun when he said jerking off. That, but, but that's I, yeah, another situation. Yeah, okay. yeah. But, um, however, um, the guy comes. He shows me the tape. The first few seconds of it, I don't know if you all seen it, but I couldn't see any more of it. I said, shut it off. That, you know, that is her. Um, he calls the lawyer. The lawyer's like, okay, can, you know, we get your family to view view this, blah, 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 blah. I was like, let me check. Um, the guy leaves, call my family in an uproar, like, she's on the tape, da, 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 da. Right. And you're not even thinking that your sister and brother-in-law or know about this, or D- I you're don't know. They're yeah. gonna be so mad. Yep. So they yep. know about it already. I don't know. Right. I don't know. I still don't know. You know what I mean? Um, because they're not talking to me. But anywho, um, yeah, that happens. I call the family. They say we want to view it, and then maybe an hour or thirty to an hour uh, later, thirty minutes to an hour later, everybody it halted. Everybody's like, no, we don't want to see it. Uh, uh-uh. tell them stop. Don't come. I'm like, what the? What's going on? You know what I mean? So I was like, okay, Robert and got to him. Now I was I was thinking about this, right? And and I, I've been thinking about this hard. As a father, you know, there's no amount of money you could pay, pay for my daughter. Mm-hmm. But then I had to think about it like this, you know. The one good thing about her not coming out is nobody knows who who she is. Exactly. She can live her life now. Yeah. You know what I mean? She can walk there. She can walk in here right now, and we wouldn't know who she mm-hmm. was because 
we don't necessarily know. She never testified. Her mm-hmm. name is not out there. We mm-hmm. don't know. Mm-hmm. But if she would have testified, mm-hmm. and if she would have took that stand, mm-hmm. her face would be plastered everywhere. Yeah. And not that her life isn't well, I don't know. Would they show a, a minor's face You would have her name. They would definitely like that? get that, her name and everything from the I don't think records. they can put her name out. They She's... didn't, but until now. And the, and the other issue is, aren't they still, like, cool with R. Kelly? I've heard rumblings, but I don't know. Mm-hmm. What's the last time you spoke to your sister? Uh, my mom passed in October. We buried her, and then the trailer came out. And I've seen her periodically, but she doesn't really speak to me, you know, at the graveside, you know, go visit my mom sometimes. But the last time um, I spoke to her was probably right after my mama passed. Have y'all spoken about the tape at all after it came out? Have you had a conversation? She, they don't want to have that conversation with me. Mm-hmm. No. they you don't want to ask to talk? No, they don't want to have that conversation with what me. What about with your niece? I've, I've asked, but they don't want to have that conversation with me. I still treat her with kid gloves mm-hmm. because she was so young then. I don't know her. She's I don't know She's been through a lot. what she would do. You know what I mean? So I really treat her with kid gloves. And But I told her when we did come back in good graces, I was estranged for 10 years from my family mm-hmm. behind this um, for speaking up and speaking out, telling the truth, mm-hmm. you know? And, and in, in 2011, my parents' 50th anniversary, we did a big to-do for them. And that's how we came back together. Now that this has come back up, um, we back where we were again. Right. You know what I mean? Not speaking and what have you. But she's beautiful on the outside. But, she, but, but I is, know is she okay? She's she's, be I don't. She, I know she's screaming on the inside. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So I don't know that she's gotten any help or anything like that. Now you've said that there were a lot of things that weren't in the documentary oh, yeah. that you wish would have been in there, and things that you said. Like, what are some of those things? Well, just um, oh, by the way, when you took off your sunglasses, you reminded me of Mary J. Blige. I swear on everything, you did. Like, I seen Mary at first. Mary, I was like, Mary, <laughs> Mary. I love Mary. I love Mary too. But you reminded <laughs> me of Mary for a second. But go ahead. Okay, so um, what was the question? Oh, some things that were I know. some things that were left out. Of oh the yeah, series. So yeah, just the fact that people are thinking that I just threw my niece out there. No, they're I, blaming I, you. I, yeah, I introduced a lot my of people family. Are Why y'all deflecting? Parents, like, come on, y'all. Members, they're saying I ain't did nothing. I definitely blamed this, you too. You this know why? keeps coming to because me. Because in the docu series, it doesn't necessarily explain well enough what exactly. happened. Exactly, it makes it seem like. Everybody heard what was going on with R. Kelly, mm-hmm. and you still introduced. Well, no, she <laughs> did say she like. did say that um, you know Barry Hankerson was there with yeah. Aaliyah. She didn't think that whole thing was real. The marriage is real. She thought it was a hoax. All of that was left out. Right. You know what I mean? So I sat in that hot seat for four and a half to five hours. It's a six-hour documentary. They can't put me all through there. Right. So some stuff is going to have to you know land on the cutting room floor. So yeah, and people going you know think what they're going to think mm-hmm. because of them not putting everything in there. So, yeah, I, that that part of me, you know, just um, sending my, uh, you know, niece in there and then leaving her in the studio. I never left my niece in the studio. Mm-hmm. And then what they don't share uh, on the piece is that I called my sister when I saw her down there by herself, when I asked, you know, what you doing here by yourself? And 30 to an hour later, my brother-in-law shows up. So never left my niece in no studio by herself and never would. Right. You still live in Chicago? I do. Have you ran into R. Kelly or seen him? Because I've seen him w- running around. Have you bumped into each other at all? Uh, one time, maybe three years or so ago, he came in a restaurant um, that a, a friend of, of ours owned at the time. And he was he looked scared because he was kept doing this like I was going to jump him or something, but no, mm-hmm. I ain't got, I ain't got nothing to say to the dude. Now, a lot of the women say that they've been getting threats. Oh, yeah. And on their lives, like, have you been threatened since all this happened? Has anyone threatened you? Not, you know, on social media. You right. did, you but, need to do this. You, yeah, yeah, you know what I mean? No, but... Um, no credible threats. I, I ain't worried about them. You know, God got me. I ain't tripping on them. But, yeah, I don't understand why they threaten everybody else. Go threaten that nigga. I mean, right. I, he he's the one doing it. Like, but I mean, on, even y'all. the people people within his R. circle, Kelly, like yeah. his former yeah. his former manager, making threats. Everybody you know, in his camp probably Van making Am. threats. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I I don't understand that whole thing. Like, are y'all willing to go down in flames for dude behind this? Like, these are young girls, you know. And and even still, even with my niece, you know, all them people were around and seeing all this stuff, like. Y'all, are, I'm I'm holding y'all accountable too because as an adult, y'all should have said something. 
You know what I mean? She's a kid, 14 years old. Mm-hmm. Like, come on. Yeah, and, and so you, I was mad that you watched the documentary. But Why? You, but because <laughs> I really thought that you brought your your, nep- your niece. And now. There. No, I mean, you told me you didn't, so it's a different situation. And the fact that you were there all the time, and I was like, Sparkle? I wasn't there all the time. So you didn't see the girls From 89 peeing in the bathroom, to 92, peeing I in wasn't... the toilet, peeing in the buckets and all that. You no, I said. don't even know any of those. I mean, he done, he done ramped his thing up to a new level with this crap. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? And I know they were very clear on the documentary with all the women how separated everybody was. Mm-hmm. And you even said no one could speak to you. Yeah. And you would try to speak, and it was... And even with his his ex-wife. Yeah. You know, oh, I want to clear that up, too. Mm-hmm. Um, When you... When you um see the piece in there of her knocking on the, on the, her bedroom door to come out to grab something to eat. And I'm there um, with Robert and some other people. And I'm hearing the knock. He ain't, you know, responding to it. I'm like, somebody knocking. Mm-hmm. And didn't respond to it again. Kept It kept on. Like, it just kept on. And I'm so like... she was in the room and in she was her knocking bedroom. to get out. Was yes. the door locked and he had to unlock it? No. Or? No, it wasn't locked. Mm-hmm. She just, she just had permission, permission to come. And I was... When she, when he said yeah and come on, I'm like, I'm looking at him like this. You a piece of work. My words, you mm-hmm. a piece of work. How dare you? How dare you? And he just, <laughs> I'm like that shit ain't funny. It ain't funny. Now, as far as the other women who are the survivors, have That's you crazy. forged any relationships with any of them? I've not met any of them. The mm-hmm. only person I do know is Javante. Okay. Yeah. And, I, of course, I know Drea, you know, but she wasn't around. He, she couldn't come out and play, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I, I, and I'm actually surprised of her voice. I, She never really spoke. Now, even with the um, watching the ex-wife and her releasing, like, even the videos of her dancing to his music and bopping to his music and, and defending him... How does that make you feel after seeing some of the stuff that he's done to your niece and these other girls? Was that recent or was those old Even if clippings? it was two years ago. Yeah, I, mean, it's, I, it's still I, been a, I think I mean, it's in bad taste. I, I don't think she should have, you know, but... We also can't say how people deal with yeah, the trauma in their lives. Yeah, like she I don't does know. Have mm-hmm. kids she has kids with him. Ma- it could exactly. be a coping mechanism yep. Most for definitely. her because a lot of the women did feel like they had to protect him mm-hmm. for a certain period of time. So it could be, you know, they have kids together. Who knows? Yeah. People yeah. mad at you for releasing a record, too. Or, or the, we are ready. Yeah, Lord, were, don't they, talk about that record, child. They going to be trying they, they to... Were, she just doing that because... That's what y'all want me to do? do come if you out. You released it come, two weeks later, out, maybe. Yo, but you released it the day look, of the doc. Look, envy. Series. Come out d- doing a twerk um, song, and you would say something about that. The song actually relates very well to it, what was going on. Exactly. People were mad look, at you for that one. 2017, I started working on my new EP that's coming out this um, year, right? Mm-hmm. And I had I have three songs in in the can, and and was gonna release one of those. This didn't come to me until March. February, March, late, late February, early March, mm-hmm. Dream Hanton reached out to me. I, I didn't agree to do it. I said, absolutely not. I don't want to do anything with that because I didn't want to dredge that back up for me nor my family. Right. Mm-hmm. This stuff keeps coming to me. I ain't chasing it. Right. I ain't ever chasing it. From t- 2001, me me calling the, uh, the authorities on, you know, for from the phone calls. You testifying. And then me, and then me um, seeing the tape and, and telling the authorities I've been at it from day one. Mm-hmm. I've been telling people this from day one. I don't know why y'all mad at me. Be mad at the person. Be mad at the culprit. Don't be mad at me. Now, Crazy. do you think that... Um... And the the song, Envy, it speaks to the time. Right, it's about... You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I, I, I'm a person who who loves music that tells a story. This was a story that's out here. Not mm-hmm. not even for just Robert. Some of the uncles and, and the granddaddies and the daddies is doing this crap, too, in our community. Mm-hmm. Come on. Mm-hmm. I'm speaking to the time, the Me Too time, the Time's Up time, the our time. You know what I mean? I'm, you know. That's how you make a statement and express exactly. yourself through your music. So, it, so if, if people are mad because, and, and even still, a portion of the proceeds from the song is going to entities. Like, um, I just, um, I had an a interview and I met a young lady. I'm, I'm spreading the love around. Mm-hmm. I'm not... Just keeping it to for myself. You know what I mean? I'm giving back. This song is a give back. How so if y'all mad at that, whatever. 
How did that affect your career? Just at the time when all of this was going on, you called the authorities, you know, and R. Kelly was still putting out music as we saw, like Ignition, mm -hmm. Chocolate Factory, all of that coming out, you know, after and during the trial. Mm -hmm. How did that end up affecting you? Because he was a powerful man yeah. in the industry, and you were at one point signed to him. Mm -hmm. So what did that do to your career? Well, I mean, as you see, I, I you know, I stopped music to go get my family back. And yeah, I'm, he, I'm sure he pulled some strings to facilitate some some things of, of me not doing certain things. But check this out. A woman came and rescued me. Um, you know, I, along with a few people in my family, you know, my, my, uh, my partner, um, he and his family, and then the Braxtons. Tony said, come out here. I'll help you eat. You know, you can eat. And I went to Vegas. I moved to Vegas for three years and, and did her show on the Strip for three years. Was she so, the back, background singer? Yeah, I was, mm -hmm. and she gave me a little shine in, in her show. So, yeah, I, I so appreciate them because mm -hmm. at that point, I had no family. You know, mm -hmm. only one brother uh, was talking to me. It's six of us, you know what I mean? So, three and three. And one brother was the only one that had my back through the whole thing and still has my back to today. Is that the one that testified that said she wasn't on the tape? No, oh, not the older brother. Oh. The mid, I call him the middle brother, okay, my okay. my. my my favorite brother. <laughs> Emotionally, yeah. what does this do to you, though? I mean, it, it's it's exhausting. Um, I've had, of course, ups and downs from it, you know. Um, yeah, I was messed up. I was real messed up for a time, you know what I mean? I had to go get collect myself because this was some this was some stuff. Losing the family, losing you know, seeing what I saw, you know, losing your career and then, at the time. Yeah, and then you know. Thinking a friend, he was a friend, and mm -hmm. to do this to me, you know, and and some people would would think that you know because I didn't give in to his advances, this is the the outcome from it. Mm -hmm. how, now, how the Chicago Police Department, how accountable do you hold them? Because clearly they had gotten you know different reports mm -hmm. at the time of things happening and going on, and they some people look at it as they covered certain things up. Yeah, but you know when when the girls settle can they do? I don't know what really, I don't know the legality of any of that. So I don't know what they could have done, if anything, if nobody is willing to come forward and not take no money Because I think it. sometimes even that's not released to the media. Like yeah. if there's, you know, somebody's uh, accusing somebody of something mm -hmm. and then there's a settlement, you know, those things, they act like it was covered up. Yeah. See, I, I, I don't know. Mm -hmm. I, I really can't speak on it, but I, I wish they had done more. I wish mm -hmm. they would have listened better. It's crazy that in court you could see it. Uh, the judge could see a tape, and the girl is sitting right yeah, there. Yeah, man. Let's talk about this. Her best friend Yo, says it's her. Let's talk about that, okay? Take her me, own aunt take me says it's out her. of the situation. Uh -huh. There are eleven to fifteen people saying that's her, that's him, her, her best friends, coaches, teachers, police officers. Take me out of the situation. You're not gonna believe them. That's really crazy. It's crazy. To me. But check this. They can catch a robber off a 20 second video and, and hang him. Twenty and this is twenty six minutes. And he's gonna yo, say it's not him. <laughs> thank you. Yo, this, yo, this has been a crazy run. Yeah, no. Crazy it, it, run. Did you ever see his, his sister around that that allegedly touched him? No. Uh, I've seen her way back when when I was recording. You know, she would come down periodically, but no, I haven't seen her or nor his brothers that were on the thing. What do you either. think should happen now with R. Kelly? Because a lot of artists are pulling their music with mm -hmm. him that they have with him off of streaming services. Mm -hmm. And you have music with him as well. Yeah. And I have no authority over that music. He Robert it. produced, wrote all of that, you know, and I'm willing to take that sacrifice. Shut it down. You know what I mean? What do you think should happen? Do you think he should go to jail? Look, yeah, I said I said this in the doc, which which they didn't show. I feel like he should get help, then take his ass to jail. Mm -hmm. Okay, I, help I, in jail. I think. Well, yeah. I think well, I don't know. Jail. I don't know if he's gonna he gonna get some help, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. but I don't know I, if it's I, gonna I, be the right I, help. I think, I think what he did to those young girls, yeah, I think, should happen to him in jail. Yeah, like, it's, it's, it's mad you know, crazy. Even though people say, "Well, it's this," no, he affected these young girls forever. He's a, he affected them and and their family. And you see, it's two two girls still with him, and it could be more. You know what I mean? You know, they, what? we got to get them. 
You know what's really Mm -hmm. awful is that people are like, well, we all in our community have seen that happening. The older guys coming to the school to pick up the young girls. Which is which is true, but it's not okay. It's still not okay. Right. Right. It's true, but it's not okay. Like that's that's what I'm saying. Right. We got some uncles, some 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 daddies, some granddaddies still are doing this crap to to us. So yeah, we need to handle this. How does it make you feel like, you know, it bothers the shit out of me, but you look on the social media and so many people are like I don't believe it. These girls are lying. Yeah. And you lived through it. You've seen it. You've seen your niece. How does that make you feel with all these people? Because we argue with them all day long. Yo, I haven't argued because my mouth is crazy. <laughs> so I won't even engage them. Yeah, you can't. You know what I mean? Because it's a never ending. It, it's a never ending. I'm not, I, I can't win with stupidity. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I can't. So I, I let them be. I let them speak their mind and block and delete and keep it moving. Got you. That's exactly what you have to do. Yes. I am not trying. Now, let's talk about the Dave Chappelle ske- sketch. sketch. Yeah. Um, the song, the Piss on You song, because everybody's been talking about that lately and how no one thought about the victim who yep. was on the tape and how that would affect her. How did you feel? I didn't find that? it funny. Mm-hmm. I, I love Dave, but I didn't find that one funny at all. Yeah. It did something to me when I saw that. I was like, damn, y'all, for real? I mean, that's really insensitive, but uh, yeah. I love him, but I didn't mm-hmm. find that, that one funny. Because mm-hmm. it's something that is personal. Yeah. Yes. Do we yeah. know who released the sex tape? Because at one time they said it was a manager because they were having problems. Mm-hmm. And then one time they said it was an ex-artist. Do we mm-hmm. ever know who released that sex tape? <laughs> Actually, one of the guys downstairs just said that they said, I, I'm i the one released the tape. Somebody I said that, that to you? Yeah. I'm like, I ain't got no power to release no tape. But, what? And, Wait, are y'all crazy? The and say, hey, Sparkle, you yeah. that sex tape? That's crazy. I'm like, <laughs> I kick my own ass if I did not Like, come on, that's my fucking knees. Mm-hmm. I can't believe somebody really? downstairs that would yeah. say that to you. I don't think he meant like meant any ill, but he just like, yo, they were saying that back in the day that I don't know. Mm-hmm. I really that? don't know, and they need thanks kick for that too. Absolutely. And who was the that's, dude? With, that's who, a young girl on the tape. Like, come on, y'all. It's child pornography. Yeah. And who was the dude, the, the dude or the woman that was uh, face all blacked out and blacked out? I don't know. I want to know that, too. No, oh, okay. If you find out. The reason I it's know. blacked out, is so know, that I'm you don't know I know. Who it is. I don't know. I, I think it was I a really... female. Does it, does it sound like a female it, a little it, bit? Because some of the things she was the saying. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't know, though. Mm-hmm. If you find out, holler at me. You let me know, too. How yep. did you feel when you watched the docuseries? Did you get to see it before <sighs> My, it came out? No, I saw it. All of y'all. Did you see it before? I, saw I know you did. Two, I saw the first two okay. episodes before. Yo, it was just heavy. Like, the first day, I was pissed. Second day, I'm crying profusely because I'm hearing all this stuff about my niece. Third day, I was just numb. I was just like, I'm drained from this. This is crazy. Like, who is this person? I don't even know him. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And these young girls, women, you know, like... If he manipulating young girls and and these older women too, older you know what I mean. Too, yeah. And he manipulating the nigga. I'm sorry, the, the men who are <laughs> around him now, mm-hmm. and they don't even know it. They brainwashing don't even don't even realize it. They blinded for the money. Oh though. my god. They blinded. It ain't. It ain't that. Money the, ain't that. Did you and, see the video of him uh, out? On his birthday in the club, and the yes. girl saying, "Somebody sent me. Take me, take me." For oh, I didn't hear that, but I heard about that. I didn't, I didn't mm-hmm. hear it on the tape. Mm-hmm. Take, take her, rape I guess her, they, or they, some they, crap. They, that they, is uh, crazy. Taping, yeah. How did Dude. that make you feel? It's like he, it almost seems like he feels like he's untouchable. He, he goes that's out, how, he's chilling. You see it. That's how he's feeling. And it's good they had psychologists on there to actually break down the mind of somebody like him, as they call it, hiding in plain sight. But we've allowed him to feel that way because we ain't done nothing. People still nobody believed me. Back when? Nope. Nobody believed me. Look look where we at now. Look at where we at now. And I this think, stuff keeps coming at me. I ain't chasing it. I think a lot of people didn't believe him, too, because there was so many artists that worked with him. So they, yeah, so, but, so you would but think, they, but, they but, still working with him, so now nah, I must be Right, lying. but you know, they just wanted the feature. Right. By R. Kelly. And people keep saying, well, no one came forward. Why are they all coming forward now? They get right. the check to do this documentary, and now they want to come. It's all for money. But nobody wants to tell these embarrassing things about themselves. Exactly. And I, and are you kidding me? Even now, like, they're saying that he would threaten to release information about your sex life, mm-hmm. you know, or put out the videos. and th- he, he actually took those videos most likely so that they would have it as like blackmail mm-hmm. in case you That's ever... That's crazy. That's crazy. Right? I ain't go through what they went through, so 
You're right, right. I know. Mm-mm. So what's next for Sparkle? What's what's Sparkle doing now? What's next for Sparkle? Do we even talk this? about it? Because yeah, these people are gonna it. be like, why is she up there talking about? Listen, at I'm the end in, of the day, I'm a singer. You're a singer. You supposed what to stop singing, I, y'all? <laughs> I haven't been out since what? 2001. I did bring a, a joint I call so bad in 2012 just to test the waters. It wasn't for sale, y'all. Mm-hmm. Okay, but you know, I'm a singer. This is what mm-hmm. I do. This is my livelihood. We already here's a dope joint. And it speaks to the moment. You listen to it, yep. Envy? Yes, I did. Did you like it? Yeah, I like it. All right. It's mm-hmm. a message behind it. Check the words out, y'all. Right. Very important and relevant to right now. Man. Um, so, yeah, I have an EP coming out spring, <laughs> summer. Um, She's like, I don't, I don't even want to talk right, about it because like, I don't want people to talk <laughs> Um, And some other little things that I'm, you know, in the works. And I'll let y'all know well, about that. Well, introduce the single right now. Ooh, do I get to introduce? Nah, yeah. we just joking. We just joking. <laughs> no, Thank you for gonna... joining us. <laughs> <I'm just kidding. laughs> no, no, no. Let her introduce that single. He's, he's, he's going to play the song <laughs> right now. Introduce the single, guys. Uh, my new joint. We are ready, y'all. Mm-hmm. I hope y'all enjoy Listen to the lyrics. It's right. a, you know, yeah. Listen to the lyrics. All right. Well, it's the Breakfast Club. Mm-hmm. It's Sparkle. <laughs> 